examination entertainment program that would engage learners with reasonable activities to occupy them. The State Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayomi Arigbabu, gave the advice during the stakeholders' meeting with eight teachers and association of private school owners in Abel Kuta, where he also charged them to put in place a parent forum to deliberate on the progress of the children, identify ways of instilling discipline, rub minds together, among others. The commissioner posited that the situation in schools has necessitated putting in place various strategies to tackle it from the foundation, saying government is working to instill good behavior in its learners, irrespective of where they find themselves. Arigabu advised them to be creative and apply wisdom in dealing and administering punishment on the learners, warning teachers not to imbibe behavior that would dent their integrity. As a leader in our group, we need to lead in a creative manner and employ the leaders to also actually administer their classes in a very creative manner. It is important for us as teachers and educators to make sure that our dignity we don't forget it. In the Goodwill Messages, the Chairman, State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEB, Dr. Femi Maja Kodumi, and the State Secretary, Association of Primary School Ed Teachers of Nigeria, Mr. Adeshino Benga, opined that the dialogue would allow for cross fertilization of ideas in addressing the salient issues in the sector. In a welcome address, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Mrs. Abosede Ogunleye, said ed teachers are foundation builders and the meeting was essential to address the lingering indiscipline act and also rub minds on how to promote and sustain sanity in the learning environment. Meanwhile, sensitization on how to read schools in Ogun State of transit, juvenile delinquencies and other social vices has continued in Remo and Ijebu block. Special advisor to the Governor of Ogun State on primary and secondary education, Mrs. Ronke Shoyombo, delivered the message of the Governor to the eight teachers in the access as they prepare for resumption. Bumi Adegon was at Adiola Odotola College, venue of the meeting where the eight teachers and principals are briefed on the next line of action against such acts by government of the state. They are teachers who have graduated to become head teachers. Their duties include helping students to acquire knowledge, competence, and virtue. As schools will be resuming for another term this year, and one of such ways of preparing them for the task ahead is this sensitization and training ongoing here at this hall, which is filled to capacity, although not peculiar to the state. Ogo State government being disturbed by the state of transi rampant these days in schools. The state wants to read the schools of this act. Special advisor to the governor on primary and secondary schools was in Ijebode to meet ed teachers in the Remo Ijebode block to tell them the government's stand. So what I am doing here today is also being replicated by um, the Honorable Commissioner. So to me, for us to actually be meeting 1,565 teachers, head teachers today, is a very, very good preparation into, be, into opening into a better year where schools will be of a better, I mean children will behave better. Teaching and learning that we have spoken about today has got to be key because if we're not careful, we cannot afford to hold our hands and allow what happened in 2021 to repeat itself. Mrs. Shuyombo also enjoined the head teachers to help government in achieving the lofty dreams it has 
for education sector. In all our schools, we will not allow social events uh, between Mondays and Fridays. I mean, we apologize for that. It may not go down well with our parents. However, we've got to look at the needs of the children, and we've got to take the needs of our children to be at the center of whatever decision we're making. For people that have been having parties in schools on Thursdays, that means you've taken 48 hours lesson away from our children, and they're going to compete with they are going to be benchmarked with children at international world. Stakeholders commended the state government for putting up the meeting as they promised to ensure that all its dreams are achieved. I pray that the government can sustain this type of meeting. We want to be hearing information directly from the horses. And you can see the attendance from our uh, head teachers is highly encouraging. We will you know, tell the learners and the parents to what to do to curb all this and we are sure that with this program it will be caught. Resumption day for all schools in Ogo State is 10th of January 2022. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. Augusta Governor Prince Dagbo Abiodun has called for a more robust relationship between the government and First City Monument Bank to create economic empowerment across all sectors of the state's economy. Prince Abiodun stated this while playing host to the management staff of the First City Monument Bank, FCMB, at the Presidential Lodge in Abiokuta. The governor also made the bank officials to know that his approach to governance is basically to enhance economic strength of the people while creating an enabling environment for public-private partnership to thrive. We want good governance, one. Create an enabling environment for public-private sector partnership, two. Um, and a combination of that can only lead to uh, uh, enhanced economic benefit for our people. If there's economic benefits, um, there will be individual prosperity. So we covered by saying that we are determined to provide a focused and qualitative governance where we are creating an immediate environment for public private sector partnership, which we believe is fundamental to the economic growth of the state and individual prosperity of our people. Governor Abiodun also encouraged the organization to be forthcoming in the corporate social responsibility, adding that his administration is ready to collaborate with all sectors of the economy. I believe that um, the collaboration between us and the bank has been a bit suboptimal. I do believe that uh, we should be able to do something um, much better. I, um, I know that there are quite a few areas that I see potentials for, uh, for, for collaboration. Uh, we are doing a lot um, in the state in all sectors. We are familiar with our uh, developmental programs called the share uh, infrastructure, social and welfare, education, environment and job creation and agriculture. And we are actively and aggressively firing on all five cylinders. The group chief executive of FCMB, Mr. Lodi Balogo, said government institutions, among others, require a much more impactful kind of support, saying that as a private organization, the bank is ready to partner the state government, especially through its corporate social responsibilities. Yeah, uh, we're, we are putting the pandemic behind us and, you know, trying to make sure that we can help you finish very strongly the first you know, term, um, and also help lay the foundations for you for, you know, for the future. So it's really to say that we are at your disposal. Um, we will be a lot more visible, um, both in terms of the impact that we're having as well as the, the frequency of engagement. I think the team that we have is, is, is a very strong one now. And so it's really to see how we can make sure these things uh, that we've talked about come to, to fruition. Mr. Balogo also promised that in the next few weeks, the organization would work out modalities on the areas to support the Prince Dapo Abiodun's administration to fulfill its vision for the state. Wife of Auguste Governor, Mrs. Bamitele Abiodun, has pledged her unflinching support for other chambers of commerce, industry, mouse, and agriculture in empowering women in their various businesses. 
Mrs. Abiodun gave this assurance while receiving the Otosima led by its president, Mrs. Sophia Saka, on a courtesy visit to her office in Abiokuta. Adebola Oshomoji reports. To further propagate the need for women empowerment in the state, the president of the Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Mrs. Cynthia Saka, led other members to pay a courtesy visit to the wife of Ogun State Governor, Mrs. Bamidele Abiodun, as the organization sought areas of possible partnership and collaboration. We take us inside for inclusion in the various environment programs. This will further enable more rural women benefit from the dividend of democracy as pertains to this administration. While welcoming them, Mrs. Bamidelia Bjordan assured of maximum support in creating an enabling environment for women to thrive in the society. Well, yes, we have to try and enlighten our women, our youths, our widows on you know, the importance of uh, this avenue of generating revenue for themselves. You know. Can do some work in sensitizing people, uh, um, especially the women who complain that they don't have any work, sensitizing them and letting them know the, the benefits of you know, growing cassava. And she also urged the organization to work in harmony with the current administration in Ogun State, noting that she is committed to protecting and promoting the interest of all sectors in the state. Adebola Oshomuji, OGTV News. And coming from Abuja now, President Muhammadu Buhari has dropped Senator Ifei Ararame as chairman of the board of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited. The president also replaced Senator Ararame with Senator Margaret Okadibo, wife of a former president of the Senate, late Senator Chuba Okadibo. The replacement of Ararame as the NNPC board chairman and his replacement with Senator Okadibo was announced in a statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishino in Abuja also appointed our executive commissioners of the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. A state to come in the news, federal government orders investigation into attempted jailbreak at Ilefe. More news and report after this time out. <music> Glad to know that you are still there. The news continues. President Muhammad Buhari has again rejected the institution of state police in the country. This comes amid calls for state policing to tackle insecurity in the nation, as the current policing system was under the federal government. The president, in an interview, insisted that state police is not an option, adding that more attention should be paid to the relationship between local government and state governors. He further added that the roles of traditional rulers in the country should not be undermined in bringing peace to communities. This is not the first time that the president had rejected state policing despite calls from the state governors. Governors of Nigeria's southwest states have condemned the alleged role of the Attorney General Abu Bakr Malami in deploying security operatives to evict residents of Magodo Estate in Lagos State. The governor said it was disgraceful for a security agent to disregard Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwulu, who visited the scene to broker a truce in the ongoing issue. Consequently, Southwest governors have advised Sonwulu to deploy a motepo, a security outfit launched by states in the Southwest to protect the lives and property of the people. Rotimi Akiridolu, chairman of the Southwest Governors Forum, in a statement said, the utter disrespect and response of the officer to the governor establishes beyond doubt the impracticability of the current system, dubiously christened federalism. 
the Southwest Governor's Chairman called on the IG to explain the justification for this intrusion. The federal government has ordered a detailed investigation to unravel the immediate and remote causes of the attempted jailbreak at Ileife Custodial Center in which four inmates were reportedly killed. Controller General of the Nigerian Correctional Service, Aliru Nababa, who ordered the investigation, however condemned the gallantry, commended the gallantry of the officers and men of Ileife Custodial Center for the professionalism in containing the attempted jailbreak in the center. This was contained in a statement issued by the Public Relations Officer of NCOS, Mr. Francis Enobore in Abuja. Nababa confirmed that the chaos was initiated by a group of inmates who attacked some officers at the center and mobilized others in a bid to facilitate jailbreak and escape of criminals. He noted with dissatisfaction Sorry, in noted with satisfaction the manner in which the attempted jailbreak was promptly controlled, thus preventing what would have resulted in the escape of ardent criminals to further complicate the security situation in society. The CJ charged the officers of the command not to relent in ensuring that peace and calm in all custodial centers in the state are not compromised. Two Chinese nationals working on the Zunge Dam project in Rafi local government area of Niger State have been kidnapped by gunmen. During the raid by the gunmen, three Nigerians were reported to have been shot dead, while one Chinese was reportedly injured. It was learned that the incident happened when the foreigners and the Nigerian counterparts were engaged in the laying of electric cables in neighboring Dusasi community. No fewer than 20 of the gunmen riding on motorcycles stormed the site where the foreign and Nigerian nationals were working and started shooting sporadically. In the confusion that ensued, the three Nigerians and one Chinese were hit by bullets, while the two other Chinese nationals were forced on two moto motorcycles and taken into the bush. However, police tactical team attached to the facility engaged the hoodlums in a gun duel while four of the expatriates were rescued, with one of them and a local staff sustained bullet injury and taken to hospital for proper treatment. The Lagos State Government has absolved all indicted parties in the death of a 12-year-old Sylvester Romani Jr. of blame. It said the autopsy report did not find any harmful and toxic substance in his body. Five pupils and five employees of Darwin College, Ikoi, were accused of complicity in Sylvester's death. The state also cleared the minors of belonging to unlawful society due to insufficient facts to establish the offense. The legal advice was addressed to the Deputy Commissioner of Police, State Criminal Investigation Department, and the magistrate Olatuboso Adiola. He states that the interim and final toxicology report of post-mortem samples by the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Louvre, and the Central Hospital, Worry, Delta State, were in agreement as to the cause of death. The legal advice added that the result of the toxicology is also not indicative of any toxic or poisonous substance in the body of the deceased, as claimed by the family. No fewer than 15 million Nigerians have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccines, according to the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. The agency explained that over 10 million of the total eligible persons targeted for COVID-19 vaccination were reached with the first dose. Also, over 4 million were reached with the second dose fully vaccinated. In total, more than 15 million persons have been vaccinated with at least one dose of life-saving COVID-19 vaccine. It was also gathered that 81,284 people across the country have received their COVID-19 booster doses. However, five states are yet to begin the administration of the doses. They include Abia, Kogi, Kwara, Niger, and Sakoto. On December 10, 2021, the federal government started the administration of COVID-19 booster doses to give Nigerians extra protection against COVID-19, especially against the Omicron variant. 
The World Health Organization, WHO, on Tuesday said the coronavirus variant found in France has not morphed into a threat since it was first identified in November. The variant was identified in 12 people in the southern ALPS around the same time that Omicron was discovered in South Africa last year. Omicron mutation has since traveled the globe and kindled record levels of contagion, unlike the French one that researchers at the Institute EU Mediterranean Infection, led by scientist Didier Raoult, nicknamed EU. The first patient identified with the variant was vaccinated and had just returned from Cameroon. Back home now, the retired permanent secretary, Minister of Physical Planning and Urban Development, Town planner Yetunde Dina is a thoroughbred professional whose contributions to the development of Ogun State will continue to be celebrated. The state governor, Prince Dakmo Abiodo, made this known at a Thanksgiving service for town planner Yetunde Dina held at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, Presidential Hilltop Estate, Abiyokuta. Matthew Shumi completes the report. After 35 years in the service of Ogun State government, rising to the peak of her career as the permanent secretary, minister of physical planning and urban development, town planner Yetunde Dino has come to offer thanks to her creator for seeing her through. Ogun State Governor Prince Dapo Abiodo, represented by the secretary to the state government, Mr. Tukumbo Talabi, appreciated her for the efforts in the development of the state. Reverend Canon Gideon Adirogba, in a sermon which centered on the importance of thanksgiving in every situation of life, said it takes divine guidance for one to recognize the need to give thanks at all times. After being joined by the dignitaries for the thanksgiving, followed by prayers, the train of celebration then moved to Excellent Event Center where the state deputy governor, Engineer Nomo Salako Yedele, congratulated the retired for starting well and ending well. I'm very happy to have uh, met her. Uh, she's been very resourceful for us here in the state. The message of the Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development was delivered by the Commissioner for Industry, Trade and Investment, Mrs. Kikele Molunge, as the former head of service, Ed Ashola Adeyemi served as the chairman of the occasion. Town planner Yetunde Dino said even though there were some challenges along the way, she turned God far. 35 years is not a joke. That's more than half my lifetime. But I thank God that the 35 years, although it has its stormy times, but the good times we are more than the bad times. So I praise God for that and I thank God. She advised those still in service to exercise patience and show commitment to their job. Matthew Show Me, OGTV News. Members of the Good State Teaching Service Commission have been encouraged to develop a positive mindset while discharging their duties effectively in the new year 2022. The chairman of the commission, Evangelist Olalikon Ifede, gave the advice at the first given get together. Two, organized by the Commission at Ukimoso Abeokuta, Taiwo Adebi covered the event and a report is presented in this package. The beginning of the new year provides the opportunity to come together in order to appreciate God for the journey of the last year and plan for the new one. In view of this, members of Ogun State Teaching Service Commission came together to appreciate God for the new year. <laughs> The chairman of the commission, Evangelist Olalekon Ifede, admonished them to work in love and unity, as this is the key to achieving success as a group. Let us see ourselves as one. Let us begin to get a cordial relationship, a cordial way of doing things. We must make sure that the love that has been updating before now should continue. He further charged members of the commission to come up with new ideas. Come up with new ideas. These days, people don't do things the way they were doing it before. Everybody come up with what? With idea. If you want to have money, what comes first? Idea. idea. If you are looking, if you have an idea, 
And you say, ah, another day not for money. You have not got idea. The permanent secretary of the commission, Dr. Abdul Wahid Olan Loye, admonished members of the commission to be more committed in their various offices and duties. A lot of hard work is more work. If you are doing well, we need to sustain what you are doing well and even move ahead. With God, all things are possible, goes the popular saying. There is need for cooperators across the state to work in unity to achieve a landslide and unprecedented feat in the new year 2022. The president of Ogun State Cooperative Federation Limited, Alaji Wasil Olaleye, made the submission at the prayer meeting to commit the new year into the ends of God. Sunday Olanero reports. For a split running of cooperative societies, Ogun State Cooperative Federation Limited organized an interdenominational prayer meeting to seek divine intervention. From across the state, the leaders of the society advocated for harmonious relationship among the members. We, we are gathering just to pray for all the cooperators in the seat. So that the, in the beginning of the, of the new year, of the financial year, we, as we have said in the prayer, we have surplus and the, 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 the members, we have benefit of the work we are doing so far in cooperative. This our new dispensation depends on God, for the power of God to envelope us, to give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that we shall need. The president of Oaks Cofed said cooperative society is key to economic development of the nation. The micro, small and medium businesses in the state, more than a quarter, are being financed by cooperative societies and their owner are also a member of cooperative society. He said the prayer, though a usual practice at the beginning of the year, will put the cooperative in a good place to perform effectively. It is the government that is supervising the activities of the OSCO Fed and uh, the cooperative is fairly well during the leadership of the state uh, governor, uh, His Excellency Prince So we, we are fearing very well. Their prayer was concluded with a visit to Stella Obasanjo Children's Home with gift items. Ogun State Cooperative Federation Limited is the umbrella body for the cooperative societies in the state. OGTV News. Nigeria's Ambassador Isaka Imam has assumed office as the Secretary General of the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation in Istanbul, Turkey. This is contained in a statement issued on Wednesday in Abuja by the D8 country office in Nigeria. According to the statement, it is Nigeria's turn to take the aim of affairs of the intergovernmental organization. It also stated that Imam's emergence was by consensus from among the nationals of the member states and approval by the summit for a non-renewable four-year term. According to the statement, the position was accorded Nigeria in accordance with principle of rotation in alphabetic order with due consideration for competence, integrity and experience. The Secretary General will be of the rank of ambassador in the diplomatic service of the member states. It stated, Imam, a retired ambassador who hails from Iloring Quora State, joined the Nigeria Foreign Service in 1993. He was conferred with the title of ambassador in situ by President Muhammadu Buhari in council in year 2020, who also approved his nomination as Secretary General of D8 in 2021. Up next is business news.